Um, on this particular session, we'll be learning a little bit about three of our colleagues and how their work is having a global impact. Now, as I'm sure you're all well aware, uh, impact is a huge agenda uh, for the for the government, for research, and um, uh, for the uh, the REF as well. So um, I have two uh, very exciting speakers, or we've got five very exciting speakers. Um, the first two to talk to will be two at a time, and then one on his own. Um, so the first two speakers who um, I believe are going to give, do somewhat of a double act is Jane Reeves, who's Emeritus Professor of Teaching, Learning and Innovation in Child Protection. And she's recently published a book on trafficking and is currently working on a UNICEF funded project. Um, also joining her in this first talk is Emma Suter, who is a child exploitation trainer and MOOC educator. So MOOC is Massive uh, Open Online Learning Course uh, with the Center for Child Protection. Now they are going to give a talk called Meet May and Bay, tackling sextortion and child trafficking in Thailand and Cambodia. So Emma and Jane, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. I'll just share the slides. OK, over to you, Jane. Thanks very much. Um, hello. Um, as Darren has said, um, uh, my name is Professor Jane Reeves. And um, in 2012, um, I was supported by the university to set up the Centre for Child Protection. Um, and that had two arms. Um, it was an interprofessional centre for child protection, which um, uh, has attracted um, all kinds of practitioners from the UK um, and internationally to um, the really groundbreaking MA, um, online MA. Um, and the second arm of the centre was to look at seeing if we could combine two quite disparate elements, which was gaming and child protection, and to look and see initially if we could train um, child protection professionals by using gaming technology to um, have environments that could be immersive and um, basically social workers, health visitors could um, have a practice in an environment um, working with families in partnership and uh, tackling the issues that arose in this in virtual environment. And David and I um, borrowed this idea from um, looking at how the police work, how doctors work um, and how other professions are trained. So it's a kind of tried and uh, tested formula in other um, areas um, and we brought it into child protection. So what myself and uh, Emma Sutar and Emma is uh, the trainer for the Centre for Child Protection and uh, goes out and about or did before COVID, does it online, uh, doing training with the simulations that we've developed over the last 10, 11 years. Um, and today I'm going to introduce to you um, May and Bay, and this came about as um, a funded UNICEF project, a half a million pound project, um, which brought together ourselves at Kent, A21, um, and ECPAT, who are organisations based in Thailand and Cambodia, and A21 um, are uh, colleagues who do on the ground work, preventative work with children and young people in both those um, regions. And ECPAT has a more strategic overview and kind of work with governments and at that kind of governmental international level across um, not just Thailand and Cambodia, but across many countries. Player three are our um, gaming company. They design games um, for the Disney, for Disney Corporation and for BBC, amongst others. And they provide really the fairy dust that we sprinkle on top of our games um, to make them really um, interactive, to make them really appealing. Um, to professionals and now to children and young people. So from that initial uh, brief where we were developing simulations for professionals, we have over the last 10, 11 years um, been very successful in um, moving that on to develop games on grooming, uh, child exploitation, sexual exploitation, um, radicalisation um, and, and different iterations and different games on those topics. This topic, Mayan Bay, is our first um, fully international project and um, one that, as I say, we're working totally in, in partnership with um, other organisations. So our objective was to design and build this, the series game, pilot it and to train stakeholders. And that's a really big part of what the centre does. Um, so Emma's job is to not just um, 
help design and deliver the games, but also to take it out and to train not only in how we use it, but to kind of elevate the level of um, knowledge, research and understanding amongst professionals so that we're doing two kind of things there. Next slide. So as I've said, we're looking to work in partnership um, and uh, the partnership came about through actually one of our MA students who worked for ECPAT. Um, finding the funding and coming to us because she had done RMA and seen the kind of interactive simulations that we developed. And the reason that they're so um, impactful is that you can really design them for the, for the context in which they're going. So um, we've been incredibly lucky. We have an interprofessional learning set of um, colleagues from ECPAT and A21 and they draw in other colleagues from those areas and they provide us with a huge amount of cultural information on what is culturally appropriate, um, how these kinds of games might be used. It's very much a preventative education game um, and one of the key outcomes that we um, hope to deliver and have delivered with our other games is that they develop skills of critical evaluation and critical analysis in the um, children and young people that we reach. And that's a real key. I mean, it's fantastic to have all these games. It's fantastic for me to sit there and go, oh, I'd love this one to look like Pixar. Um, you know, please, can you do it? Play three um, and all of those kinds of things. And we can bring in really innovative teaching and learning hooks that the children and young people can click on, they can um, interact with, they can learn um, about social media platforms and all of that. But if it doesn't actually work, if they don't develop those skills of critical evaluation, if they don't use these games as a practice to how they are online, then there's no point. So um, we've done some initial research on our projects from the UK and they have shown that they actually do develop those skills of critical evaluation. So we're very much um, drawing on that previous learning, but also, um, as I say, using the culturally specific information and, and, and knowledge from our partners. We're also making a, a version in English so that they can be uh, can be used in this country, um, but also in international schools. So we're really targeting um, different areas with the different versions and the different languages. And hopefully that will have a really uh, positive impact on um, the MA numbers um, for our international MA in child protection. How am I doing? Next slide. OK, so just before I hand you over to Emma and she's going to take you through May and Bay and they are two separate stories, one loosely set May um, in Thailand and the other um, um, is more um, designed around Cambodia, the Cambodia setting. Um, David and I, Professor Shemins and I, um, developed these simulations um, as, as a preventative education model to interrupt grooming and exploitation by teaching children and young people, as I've said, to think critically, to protect themselves and help their friends, to signpost children and young people where to go for help independently. So these are always delivered with a facilitator and we train those professionals, as I've said, but actually we're now moving into games, um, particularly with this one and with just doing one with Sport England, um, to actually provide the information in the game themselves directly for the children, where they can go, where the helplines are, who they can turn to for help. Um, because there have been cases in terms of charities, for example, where actually some of the people who are working with the children are actually groomers and exploiters themselves. So we're trying to take that research into account. So that's the first thing. The second thing we're hoping to do is to switch on the safeguarding mechanisms in the schools and organisations, community organisations, where these um, games are being delivered. <laughs> and that's particularly um, relevant in Thailand and Cambodia where they may not have safeguarding policies. So we're developing, Emma's in spe specifically developing the training materials to have templates of what safeguarding might look like in an organisation and how they can integrate that into their professional practice. OK, I'll hand over to Emma. She's going to take you through some of the uh, designs and where we've got to in the game. Emma. 
Thank you, Jane. Um, it's my great pleasure to be able to um, introduce to you some of the early images from May and Bay. Um, everything that you're going to see um, is a work in progress here. We've been working on this now since um, January to get this far. And we can see here on the screen, we've got um, May and Bay in the top left hand corner there. May is an 11 year old girl. And as Jane said, um, her story is set loosely around a, a Thai like city, although there are no country specific references. We also have Bay, who is set in a typical um, large Cambodian town and they tackle different images, um, tackle different um, storylines. So May's storyline is about looking at grooming and um, specifically around explicit images because we know that there is a massive issue around Thailand being a source country for those child abuse images. So it's about setting up those preventative education tools to develop that critical thinking for children on the ground but also for professionals as well. We can see in the top right hand corner here, we've got um, some of the characters, um, very Pixar-like. Um, Jane for many years has wanted a Pixar style um, simulation. Um, and now we're finally able to do that with this project. We have been in, um, in talks with the organisations on the ground as well to make sure that things are culturally specific. In the bottom left hand corner here, we can see May's bedroom. Um, and there was a lot of back and forthing with, um, with a wonderful um, player three team who were able to make those changes to make it look like a, a typical bedroom for an 11 year old girl um, in a country like so some of the things that we're going to be doing um, throughout the, the serious game is looking at some different issues. We are introducing the concept of contextual safeguarding and looking at safe and unsafe people, safe and unsafe places and spaces in the community. And we're able to um, scaffold the knowledge around contextual safeguarding. We're able to look at those different risks and we ask the children to um, assess what's going on for May and also to critically reflect on how they might keep themselves safe as well. We've got different um, professionals that are popping up to support along the way. On the right hand side here, we see the, the police officer who helps the, the user to be a detective to try and keep May safe. And on the left hand side here, we can see um, May's teacher as well. And she's also critical at supporting to keep May safe. We also um, very importantly are looking at online safety um, and around those um, very important critical things thinking skills, because we know that the speed at which grooming can take place is very rapid indeed. And if children are going to be um, using social media and are going to be messaging, then it's really important that we address this and provide those preventative, preventative education tools and really kind of structure that knowledge. I think this is called um, global challenges, and it certainly has been a global challenge to think about how we do this in a culturally sensitive way. Um, in a way that resonates with the networks that are on the ground um, out there, the structures that are already in place, um, to do it in a, in a culturally sensitive yet effective manner. Um, and we're still wrestling with some of those challenges. But um, I have to say, I'm really impressed that everybody on the project team has been able to come together. And despite the added challenge of um, COVID and not being able to go and visit ourselves, we've still been able to overcome those difficulties. Um, and as you can see from the many images in front of you, it's really beginning to take shape. Um, particularly May's storyline is um, really taking shape. So we're going to look at that in a bit more depth. Um, so here we see a selfie from May. She um, receives a phone on her 11th birthday um, and she begins um, taking those, um, taking the selfies. We can see here in the background that she's got some posters on her bedroom wall. She aspires to, um, to be um, a model. She's exploring with the, the um, image sharing um, and the different likes and the challenges that are faced there. So we've built um, learning points in there around um, e-safety, around image sharing, around what to do when you get your first phone, um, about having um, apps that are like Find My Friends and Location Finders, etc. All sorts of layers of e-safety. Um, and as we know that May, um, she's aspiring to, to want to, to be a model and she sees an advert for a modelling agency um, and she gets in touch and she's very keen to, um, to audition and she's getting sucked in and we can see the early factors and indicators of grooming there. 
So we see that she's changing her appearance. Um, so we're able to have a conversation about the, the manipulation there. Um, and she's in touch with somebody called Miss Talent from the um, from the modeling agency. And um, and we're able to reflect on um, who is Miss Talent, is she really who she says she is, um, and think about that kind of image sharing. And the speed at which children can be manipulated in terms of how they are sharing their, um, their images. Um, and so Miss Talent um, asks May for um, some um, more revealing pictures. And then we get to this um, this image. As I say, all of the images at the moment are not fixed um, and they're very much a work in progress. This um, image really, um, it, I think it caused some, some upset within the, the project team because we've all been working with May um, for, for such a long time now and you, you tend to form a relationship with these characters. I've been working with these simulations now for, um, for six years. And I've seen how people form a relationship with the different characters that we've built through the, the various different platforms, like um, like Lottie, like Mariam and Joe. Um, and here we've developed this relationship with May. And then suddenly we see the speed at which she's posting these images and we can see the trajectory that she's on. So it's about trying to provide those, those that safeguarding and that critical thinking so that children are able to keep themselves safe and so that um, educators are able to work with children as well around that kind of safety. So we see May is um, posting this, this image before she goes to, to her audition. Um, we can see here the police officer pick it. This is one of the many learning points that will be there. I would say the game is very much in development at the moment. So this is one of the early examples of the, the learning points. We start with the images and then we think about how the interactive um, nature of it will go. And there are very many learning points um, throughout the simulation so that children can reflect on what's happening for May um, and also reflect on their own safety and their own spaces and places and communities and their own online use as well. And it's done in a really safe, non-judgmental, non-victim blaming fashion in order to be able to facilitate those conversations. So we have a crossover as well between the two storylines. So this is Chilina and she appears um, in Bay's storyline. Um, and also we see that May is watching her TikTok makeup um, tutorials here. Um, we know that TikTok is a big platform at the moment. So we're including, um, a, so I should say a TikTok style, of course, we never directly kind of um, reference these sites, but we just allude to them. So um, Bay's scene is still um, in, in early development. Um, we focus on um, him cycling around his community. We're looking at contextual um, safeguarding as he does so. We're covering issues around um, online gaming um, and how there's those early factors and indicators of grooming online. There's also an opportunity to look at trafficking and border crossings um, and build some of the resources that NGOs have been using on the ground in schools out there around border crossings um, into a digital resource so children can understand about the, the safety and issues around trafficking. Um, we also very excitingly have this um, risk ometer, which has been there's been several risk ometers um, in development, and Pete and his wonderful team have come up with this, which is similar to a Mancala style game. Um, and so you take your marble or your pebble and you place it um, where you think the risks may be, and we're assured we get a nice, satisfying little sound when this happens as well. Um, so there's the, the interactive nature around that. Um, we also have the talking um, avatars as well. So there's been challenges around um, ensuring that we're able to make this work um, seamlessly um, in English, in Khmer and Thai as well. Um, so there's been lots of challenges around that. That's just a very kind of brief overview of, of where we're at so far. I could say more, but I'm very aware of time. So Jane, I'd like to hand back to you just so you can talk about data collection. So everything we um, develop is based on research. So we, we do a literature review um, ongoingly through um, the, the first year of development of the simulations. But one of the um, really important things to do now is to um, include data collection for impact. That's really uh, significant for obviously gaining future funding. So all the data is non-identifiable. Um, so children and young people, we, we don't know where they are, um, who they are, unless they uh, they tell us um, if they're male or female and um, whether they're in Thailand or Cambodia. So we can't track individual people. 
uh, or children and young people. And we're collecting data throughout the game in the in the kind of responses that the children and young people give, but also in uh, taking that more helicopter view from the professionals uh, about how this is going down and being used um, for learning. So we're looking at the features and um, the embedded learning. Uh, we're looking at how often the um, um, the lines are used um, that, that young people can um, contact. Uh, I've got, the word's gone out of my head now. What are they actually called? Um, helplines, that's it, there we are, um, that the children and young people um, actually use so we can kind of count those up um, and what and see whether or not they're going, they're using those. Um, and then overall that feedback from professionals, how they're being used, where are they being used, uh, the kinds of age groups, the context and some um, critical analysis on maybe what could we do if we um, wanted to um, improve the game or um, what, what elements are really working with the children and young people. That's gold dust to us. We really need that. And I have to say a huge amount of consultation is going on during the development of the game to ensure that we get that as right as we can because once the game is built unless we get additional funding we can't kind of alter that so the way that we deal with that is by having the training pack and training the professionals um, as we go through so we're looking forward to some nice short-term data next year from um uh, the year rollout. So it's a year rollout next year, but also the data is there and we can go on collecting that for as long as the games are used. Is that the final slide, Emma? This is the there final slide. Okay. So um, we've, I think we've said of that scenarios are being finalised. Um, we, we consult with children and stakeholders. It's being built. The training pack is being put together. We're creating a supportive e-learning um, uh, module on Moodle um, that um, can be accessed by professionals and we're going to start um, rolling this out next year by doing specific training with specific targeted organisations and then a series of webinars um, and then we'll be exploring future funding opportunities to scale it up, translate it into different languages as ECPAT and A21 have organisations all over the world. So I think that's all I want to say. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you both. That's absolutely fantastic. Uh, now, I don't see any uh, questions at the moment, um, but if anybody would like to uh, unmute their microphone and turn their camera on and ask a question, you're more than welcome to do so. Henrik, Henrik you've got, got one. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It's really fascinating, um, the work you're doing. Um, I just will quite, be quite interesting to hear how how you imagine how long how long this game might be up to date? Because I could imagine that dealing with these criminal activities, that their techniques of grooming will evolve over time. Particularly as educational programs kick in, the children get more sensitive to particular strategies they might be using. So, do you think that this game will be something that we will continuously need to be continuously invested in to to embed that those so new strategies that might be on the observed on the ground by those studying those phenomena? I think that's a really interesting question. Um, I think if we look back at the games we've developed since 2012 um, and our grooming games were 2014, 2015 and 2016, yes we have made some minor tweaks to them over the years and that, that we, we fully expect to be able to do that with this one funding permitting but the way that we tend to tackle that is through the training so um, if if things do change if there are different techniques um, if there are different platforms we can bring that into the training pack very easily the modus operandi of grooming um, is largely the same the world over and largely the same and it's been the same since Jimmy Savile it's just it's just changed um, from context um, to online but we know that and we we can embed those in. Um, if there are different platforms that emerge, if there are different ways of doing things, then we are able to do that absolutely through the training um, and through the, the training pack. And hopefully, as I've said, through additional funding, we are, we are able to do that. So we got some additional funding in, I can't remember the year 2017, 2018, and we altered Lottie, which is our one on child sexual exploitation. We work with Childline to do that. So yes, there are tweaks that can be made. Okay, I'm conscious of time, everyone. Um, so, and thank you for that very complete answer, Jane. But I, I think perhaps it's worth uh, moving on. So, thanks to our uh, first two speakers. A round of applause, if you can.